And we'll be speaking now with one of the lawyers for SMNI, Attorney Mark Tolentino. Attorney Tolentino, good afternoon to you. Thanks for joining us today and welcome to the program. Uh, yes, good afternoon, uh, Miss Carmina. Yes, yes, yes. So, yeah, welcome you. to the program, Attorney Tolentino, and Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year. All right, so the NTC, let's begin with that. The NTC, can Motoproprio fulfill or uh, perform its mandate to voluntarily probe any network for that matter? And yet, you claim that with what they did, they violated the Constitution. Why do you insist on this? There is a violation of the Constitution because we were not given an opportunity to explain our side. And second, their basis is actually Public Service Act, Section 16N, that says that they can suspend or, or revoke any certificate. When you say certificate, that is the Certificate of Public Convenience or the Provisional Authority issued by NTC. Mm. So they have no authority, they have no jurisdiction with respect to the legislative franchise. So we are talking here of the legislative franchise because they, they were dictated uh, upon the resolution of the House of Representatives. And uh, it's very clear under our Philippine Constitution that the NTC has a quasi-judicial function. They're acting like a judge. So it's a quasi-judicial function under the principle of separation of power. They're under the executive department. So mm -hmm. therefore, they can decide in their own, independent in their own, and not to be dictated or influenced by other bodies like the House of Representatives. Yeah, but in their statement, they said they took cognizance of that, but they can also um, motu proprio probe any network for that matter. So whether or not they base it on uh, the, the resolution of the House, they can still motu proprio act on yes, it they, and, they can... and, and investigate. Go ahead. They can do. They can. They can motu proprio investigate, but they cannot suspend immediately without compliance of the due process clause of the Philippine Constitution. It's very clear under the Philippine Constitution, no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. It means uh, they need to give us an opportunity to explain our side. Uh, why is there? Why we should be suspended or retained or, or we, why, why should be penalized for any action? So we have to, uh, we need to explain our side before they will give any suspension order. Mm. To be to be sure, Attorney Tolentino, this is not the only complaint being uh, um, faced by SMNI. There's another complaint by a private individual. Um, with that particular case, and this um, was based on, I think, red tagging, if I'm not mistaken, um, that uh, the uh, private individual accused the network of being um, of doing. Um, can you explain to us how the SMNI, how SMNI, how you engaged? Um, with with the NTC, um, particularly on that complaint of that private individual, as opposed to um, the suspension order now given by NTC, tell us the difference and what um, engagement um, did the NTC ask of SMNI? Uh, Carmina, we are talking here that there is a, a Supreme Court decision that allegation is not equivalent to guilt so there are uh, those complaints are just complaints so uh, so it means it's not yet a, it's not yet proven beyond reasonable doubt and don't forget there is a presumption of innocence on the part of SMNI there is a presumption of good faith on the mm. part of SMNI mm. so no, therefore um, attorney Tolentino, I was asking more of because you were you were saying a while ago that you weren't given the opportunity to explain your side with this particular suspension order correct but there was yeah. also so previously, I think it was filed um, late 2022, a complaint um, against SMNI filed before the NTC. In that particular case, were you given the opportunity to explain your side? Because that complaint, I think, is up for resolution as well. That is an independent case, different from this case. If you read the resolution of the NTC, the, their resolution uh, is based on the... Uh, the decision of the NTC is based on the resolution of the House of Representatives. Mm. So let's focus on the House of Representatives because that is the basis of the suspension order. The, the case of, of SMNI with respect to other complainants is different from the from this case because the case or the ruling of the SMNI with respect to uh, of the NTC with respect to the suspension refers to the resolution of uh, House of Representatives and we believe that resolution is unconstitutional 
illegal and in violation of due process laws and violation of the separation of uh, power uh, principle of the Philippine Constitution. Now, I understand you perfectly and I understand you clearly. I'm just trying to uh, sort of thresh out the issues here. If you're saying that you're not being given the opportunity to explain your side in this particular case, I'm trying to investigate if you were given the same of, or if you were not given the same with, in with respect, respect to the uh, to the private complaint. Because what the, we go ahead. Okay. With respect to the private complainant, uh, Ms. Hermina, yes, we were given an opportunity. Uh, that is different case. But this is this case with respect to the resolution of the House of Representatives. We were not given an opportunity to explain our sign. All right. So given that answer now, now that you have differentiated how the NTC dealt with SMNI in these two separate cases, what does that tell you? That you were given the opportunity to explain with regard to that private complaint, but you weren't given, as you claim, the opportunity to explain with this particular suspension order. Go ahead, Attorney Tolentino. Yes, Madam. If you if you check the resolution of the NTC, we received it last December 21, but still that's questionable if there was proper service of the resolution. But yes, December 21 we received it. We were given uh, 15 days to to respond to the to that resolution. But there is also a provision there that the SMNI were suspended for 30 days. So mm. it means. We were given opportunity, but immediately uh, there is a suspension for 30 days. So that's why it comes now the violation of the due process clause of the Philippine Constitution. And also, we also cite in our petition for certiorari with TRO uh, with respect to the freedom of press and freedom of expression. Because it's based, uh, based on the Supreme Court ruling that the if in case there is a ruling of a government that is in conflict with the freedom of press and freedom of expression, there is a presumption of unconstitutionality. Mm. It means the resolution or the ruling of the NTC is presumed unconstitutional. So therefore, they need to present a clear and present danger rule under the principle of clear and present danger rule why, uh, why their ruling is constitutional. Otherwise, the, the presumption will prevail, and that presumption is the ruling of the NTC is unconstitutional. But that is your claim, that this is a press freedom issue, when many experts in journalism have said, have spoken out, that this is not a press freedom issue. What do you say that to is, that? That is their opinion. I respect their opinion, but hopefully they will also respect our opinion, that we believe that the, this case is not only about SMNI. This case is about freedom of press and freedom of expression. And the government, the state, and even our Philippine constitution guarantees freedom of press and freedom of expression. But that freedom is not absolute. Uh, there's also yes. responsibility. Um, what do you say to yes. those who say who who have the opinion, Attorney Tolentino, that you claim um, uh, that this is uh, an assault on press freedom? But what about the responsibility that should have gone with it and that was lacking in the broadcast mentioned, both in the NTC order and the MT or RCB resolution as well? Go ahead. Uh, there is a presumption. Uh, we, I respect the resolution. I respect the opinion of those uh, saying that there is uh, the press freedom is not involved in this case. But we believe that there is press freedom violated. Uh, there is press freedom. Uh, the freedom of press, freedom of expression, uh, were violated. And in fact, it's very clear under the Philippine Constitution that the the NTC, in case there's a resolution by NTC that in conflict with the freedom of press, that ruling is unconstitutional. So that's why uh, that's why we're asking NTC to give us an opportunity to explain our side. Mm. Before they will they will give a resolution, uh, they should give us an opportunity to explain. Uh, if you check the House of Representatives, there is no House a House uh, what do you call? committee report yet. There is no committee report with respect to the investigation of the House of Representatives. The, re the investigation of the House of Representatives is only in aid of legislation. Yeah. But, but so Attorney Tolentino, why use. do you... Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Use. Attorney Tolentino, I'm sorry to cut you there, but why do you now go back to the House of Representatives saying that there's no committee report yet, when precisely as you were filing the, um, the appeal before the Court of Appeals um, yesterday, you were saying that there, they, they were in violation as well of the separation of the legislative and executive, and yet now... 
in the last sentence that you just said, you're referring back to the committee report. I thought you're, you were arguing that there has to be separation. And now you look back at that. Go I, ahead. I have to explain that, uh, Miss. With respect to the House Committee, the investigation is only in aid of legislation. Hmm. So therefore, any investigation with the NTC or uh, with the House of Representatives is separate and distinct from the administrative proceeding in the NTC. Therefore, the NTC should conduct an independent, separate investigation before they will give any decision. Mm. And don't you think they've done that? Unfortunately, no. So that's why we're filing a case before the Court of Appeals, the petition for certiorari, prohibition of mandamus, with prayer for injunction and temporary restraining order. And we're hoping and expecting that the NTC will decide in our favor. As you were filing the appeal yesterday, um, I forget if it was you or um, Attorney Rolex Suplico who said that you don't even know what you're being accused of. Um, yes, it's good. It's yeah, good. But, but again, we go back to the House hearing, um, which you were a part of, which yes, the yes. NTC took cognizance yeah. of. It is laid out pretty well, the alleged violations committed by the network. Why do you claim now that you don't know what you're being accused of? Uh, no, Miss uh, Ms. Carmina, because we were not given an opportunity to explain. If you check the investigation, we're only allowed to say yes and, or no with a risk of a contempt. So there is a possibility that we will spend our Christmas or New Year in prison if, if we give an answer that is not favorable to the congressman. To the to the member of the committee so that's different that's different investigation that's why we are our allegation is that the house of representative investigation is only in aid of legislation they cannot use that investigation with respect to the administrative proceedings in the ntc because ntc has a quasi judicial function and they should exercise the quasi judicial function like a judge of the of the judiciary let's go to the issues one by one raised um in in the hearing at the House of Representatives. Um, the contention is that there was a failure to get uh, congressional consent of ownership um, of shares of stock. Was there a failure to do so, Attorney Tolentino? There was no failure. So there is a congressional, uh, what do you call this, uh, with respect to the with, uh, what you call this, with respect to the reporting, they, they're talking about we failed to report. But if you read the law about the franchise law, we were there is no specific date when so we are we are on the process of giving uh, information to the house of representative uh, about the about the transfer of shares if there's transfer of shares and second there are also issue about corporation soul and also what do we call this the the soul the corporation soul and with respect to the other corporations the, the kingdom of Jesus Christ is a corporation soul. So there is no transfer of share in case there's transfer of leadership. It's like a Catholic church or the Archbishop of Manila, Archbishop of Iloilo, that, uh, that they're acting, they're, they are corporation soul. So it means if there's change of leadership, it doesn't mean that there is change of shares of stocks. Was there change of leadership? There was change of leadership, I think, in twin. I think in 2019, there was change of leadership because uh, from Apost Pastor Apollo Sikiboloy to, to Marlon Jacobo. Was there change of ownership? There was no change of ownership. It was change of leadership under the principle of corporate on soul. In corporate on soul, uh, it doesn't mean that you are the leader, you are also the owner. For example, Pastor Apollo Sikiboloy, he is just a trustee. So what Trust are what are you then? The so Attorney Tolentino, if that is what you're saying, what are you then in the process of um, um, complying with the House of Representatives when you claim there's no change of ownership? Then what were you saying a while ago that you were in the process of? Yeah, we um, are in the process informing of the House of Representatives. With respect, Go ahead. With respect to the 30 percent shares of the public offering, we are we uh, we form a cooperative. I think the shares of the cooperative is 1% plus, but still on the process of making it 30%. Because if you read the franchise law, there is no specific date when should 
we comply that 30%. Mm -hmm. But when we did are you... on the process. We are on the process yeah. of complying that 30%. Therefore, there is no intent to violate the franchise law of mm -hmm. the SMNI. There was no, act, there, we were not acting in bad faith. In fact, we are in compliance. We are in substantial compliance with the, uh, with the, uh, what do you call this, the franchise law of SMNI. When did you initiate the process? We are in the process because the SMNF franchise was approved, I think, 2019. So we started a year after until today. And hopefully before the, because if you read the law, there is no date five years, 10 years. So we can do that as soon as possible. Yeah, but but, but, but there is a responsibility. You can't sit yes, on that responsibility, right? Yes, there's a responsibility. That's why we we comply. We, we, we are on the process of complying. So there is no bad faith. There is no intent to violate the law. In fact, we comply all the laws. Uh, we, we comply all the requirements. Otherwise, if we are very strict in that requirement, all the media establishment in the Philippines will be terminated if that is the if that is the argument the other argument here is that there was a failure in your responsibility to the public when you allegedly peddled fake information your reaction to that if you read the franchise law the the public responsibility with refers only to intentional false information intentional false information and in this case there was no intentional uh, false information given by smni what, why fact, do you say there was no fact, false uh, can, can i Go finish ahead. so Go with ahead. respect if you read the philippine constitution in case there is inaccuracy of reporting inaccuracy of any news it it's still covered by the freedom of press or freedom of expression what the mr Sellis did he was just asking whether or not there is 120 billion funds of the office of the speaker. There was no statement given by Mr. Uh, Selis, but it was just a mere question. Then what did he granting, apologize granting, for? Granting it was a statement, still, it is still covered by the freedom of press and freedom of expression in the exercise of in the exercise of the of the as a citizen to question. Where San Galing, where uh, with respect to the public funds? Yeah, I completely understand that. But why? Why did he apologize then? To begin with, what did he apologize for? He apologized about. I cannot talk in behalf of Celis right now, but based on my information with Mr. Celis, he was not apologizing about. He has not. He's not asking for apology with respect to the to the, his statement. He only apologized because of the. Uh, maybe damage or injury cost to the House of Representatives. Mm. Let's go back to what you said, that there was no intentional false information um, yes, yes. that was being given, um, but there was red tagging involved. How is that unintentional? It's a red tagging. It's not part of the, field, uh, of the freedom, uh, what do you call it? It's not part of the legal system. There is no pr principle of red tagging under Philippine law. But still, uh, when we say red tagging, we need to ask for a clarification or definition, legal definition of red tagging because there is no law that talks about mm. red tagging. Still, what, whatever is the statement given, still part of the freedom of press, freedom of expression, as long as there is no intentional false uh, information given. And we believe that the reporters of SMNI, they were not given, uh, they, they did not give any intentional false information granting that they give intentional false information the mtrcb can uh, imp uh, impose a penalty to those programs suspend or terminate the program but not the entire network of smni mm. there's another because thing if that you I, check, if you check uh, miss carmina mm. the smni there's a program purely educational there's a health program about health a program about law, like the Pinoy Legal Minds, mm -hmm. program about tourism, program about business. So it's not only about red tagging, about politics. Maybe granting that they are not correct, they can suspend the program, but not the entire SMNI network. And that's another thing that I wanted to talk to you about. Um, I think it was Rolex, uh, Attorney Rolex Suplico who said, you know, the only programs in question here are two programs. But why are you presenting it as such? As if there was no question being raised about alleged violations um, of uh, the franchise of SMNI. You seem to be focusing 
on the franchise when it's convenient and when it's not, you then go to the two programs when it's also convenient for you. Explain that for us. Um, Mr. Ms. Carmina, the SM and I are always presumed innocent, always presumed in good faith. Those who have filed a complaint against SMNI, they have the burden of proof to do it. We have no obligation to present that we are, we are in good faith because we are always presumed in good faith. That is a principle of the democratic and republican government. We are presumed innocent. We are presumed in good faith. So those who file a complaint, prove it in court, prove it in proper venue, not, not, in, not, uh, not imposing or not dictating the, the quasi-judicial body like NTC to decide without uh, without complying the due process clause of the Philippine Constitution. That is our stand and we remain in that stand. On the other hand, when we were talking about the press freedom issue and uh, journalism experts have said that this is not a press freedom issue, um, the NTC itself uh, is in question here. There are those who also point to the weaponization of the NTC. You talk about ABS-CBN, what the NTC did then, and what it is doing now to SMNI. Your thoughts on this, Attorney Tolentino? And uh, ABS-CBN is different from SMNI. I mean, ABS clearly, obviously. No, yes. but I, the question was about uh, yes, yes, the, the so-called weaponization of the, the agency. Go ahead. ABS-CBN, the franchise of the ABS-CBN was already expired. The SMNI franchise is still valid up to for 25 years. So yes, we believe that the franchise is not a right, it is a privilege. But when a government uh, issued a franchise to a certain establishment, like a media establishment, there is a sense of vested right that needs to be protected. There is, there is no, yes, it is discretionary, but still subject to the due process clause of our Philippine Constitution. January 4, there's going to be an administrative hearing. What's your game plan? So we will, we will be there. We, we will try our best to cooperate to the investigation and ask the, SM, the NTC to give us an opportunity to explain and set aside the suspension. And hopefully, if in case the TRO, the TRO will not be issued by Court of Appeals, we're asking NTC to set aside the suspension and we will cooperate whatever is the investigation grant, but still, please, uh, we're expecting that they should be neutral, they should be fair, and they should be impartial. Well, if that's your game plan to begin with, why did you have to go to the Court of Appeals to file that appeal? If you're going to pray for the same during the administrative hearing come January 4, Attorney Tolentino. That, that's a different issue. We, we are to, uh, the, 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 our filing a case with the, with the N, uh, against NTC to the Court of Appeals, we are talking of the suspension in violation of the due process clause. But with respect to the NTC, we will explain our side because we were given 15 days to explain our side. Mm -hmm. So that is our plan to explain our side. But of course, subject to the due process clause of the Philippine Constitution, subject to the relevant laws and regulations. All right. Attorney Mark Tolentino, their lawyer for SMNI, thanks again for taking our call. Thanks for uh, uh, accepting our invitation to be um, our guest on this program today. Thanks again and Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year, Ms. Carmina.